All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're gonna talk about what Andre Ward had to say about the Terrence Crawford Errol Spence Jr. fight to Sean Porter and myself. <laughs> Let's talk about that in this video. Right. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, Terrence Crawford and him pulling out of the Errol Spence Jr. fight. Sean Porter had made a statement regarding the uh, with advice to Terrence Crawford and saying, look, man, you cannot do this type all this stuff by yourself. If you do this stuff by yourself, things may not go right. Andre Ward took exception to that. And also Andre Ward made a statement to me on Twitter and said that I missed it. Um, now, before I get into the uh, subject matter of the video, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you're a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, let me say thank you very, very much for your continued support. If you are a uh, new, if you're new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. All right, so first things first. Um, Andre Ward, we all know who he is, one of the best fighters this century, one of my favorite fighters ever in the very long time that I've been watching boxing. Absolute warrior, very, very bright guy, seems like to be a, a very, very nice guy. Um, uh, ESPN commentator now, where I think he does a very, very solid job. You're not going to agree with everything that everybody says, but still just hold him in very, very high regard, have a lot of respect for him. Uh, he made a comment uh, in response to Sean Porter, where Sean Porter had said to Terrence Crawford, that look, you need to, um, if you come to the table by yourself in a negotiation, things may not go well. Now, uh, Andre Ward took exception to that and said, hey, that sounds like to me like you're saying, you know, shut up and box uh, where, you know, and shut up and box is similar to shut up and dribble uh, where you tell an athlete, look, just do what I say. If you do what I say, then, um, you know, and let me take care of the business and all you need to do is just be quiet, trust me and go play your sport as if you are not supposed to respect their business acumen or their right to, you know, guide and control their career. Right now, uh, Sean Porter responded to that and said, you know, that, you know, based on that was based on what he heard. And, you know, he said, if this was true. Right. And they kind of squashed that. Now, uh, if for my very small part in it, Andre Ward said, because I responded in the tweet I, and I was like, look, man, you can't tell me that people don't know what's going on in this fight, you know, as far as this negotiation, because Terrence Crawford sat, got on Instagram and told people what was going on in the negotiation. You've had Terrence Crawford's camp leaking information out of the negotiation and Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford both were on Twitter and Errol Spence Jr. is literally taking excerpts from the, from the, um, from documents related to the deal and putting them out there where they both agree to what was said. So when people like for me, in my opinion, I'm not gauging my opinion off of anything other than what has come directly out of Terrence Crawford's mouth. So the idea that people are out here just winging it, you know, winging it a prayer, guessing it was going on. Absolutely not. You know that it, you know that there was no guarantee for Errol Spence Jr. or Terrence Crawford because they both said it. You know that there was a percentage, a 35% split up, uh, 35% um, for Terrence Crawford and 65% for Errol Spence Jr. Because Terrence Crawford said it. You also know what Terrence Crawford said to Al Heyman and what he said Al Heyman said back to him because Terrence Crawford said it. Now, if this was something where nobody knew if Terrence Crawford had never said anything and Errol Spence Jr. had never responded to him, then maybe we would be in a situation where there's no, where you don't have any inside information. But seeing as Terrence Crawford has been very, very forthcoming with information related to why he turned down the fight, 
I don't know where you, I don't know where that comes from. How else are you supposed to not believe Terrence Crawford and not believe Errol Spence Jr.? Because that is where the information is coming from. The information that people are talking about is not coming from Mike Coppinger. It's not coming from unknown sources that people are not talking about. It is literally coming out of the mouth of Terrence Crawford. Now, I'm not sure whether or not Andre Ward is paying very close attention to what on what Terrence Crawford is saying, but Terrence Crawford is an inside source to the negotiation. So I don't know what people are missing here. This man says that he was going to accept that he had accepted all of the terms for the agreement. That is what Terrence Crawford said out of Terrence Crawford's mouth. We're we not supposed to believe that just supposed to say, well, no, he didn't say that he agreed to all the terms. Now I, when his team said that he had signed the contract, I knew that wasn't true because logic tells you that's not true. He did not sign the contract because if he had signed the contract, that would have been fully executed and we'd be having a fight. Also, it wouldn't have signed the contract and said that you need three more things and you didn't get them, right? Now, Terrence Errol Smith Jr. about the requirements that Terrence Crawford said he had. Terrence Crawford laid those, Errol Smith Jr. laid those things out in a text message. Now, if people are missing things, um, they're missing things because they're listening to Terrence, because they're listening to Terrence Crawford, not because they're making stuff up whole cloth and running around with all of that. No, they're listening to Terrence Crawford. Now, as far as the issue, and it goes with, with as far as it goes with uh, Sean Porter, Sean Porter is 100% correct. There's a difference between saying you should not go to a negotiation table by yourself versus saying that you cannot be a decision maker in the you the prime decision maker and director of your career. Those are two different things. That is like saying, look, man, I am in charge of my own business. I'm going to file my own taxes. Would you do that? You should probably should not. Why? Because there's CPAs, certified public accountants, whose full-time job is to advise people who make the money about what they should do in order to, mac to minimize their tax liability and maximize the amount of money that they earn that they actually keep themselves. That is being called, that's it being advised. No different than if somebody is going into a boxing ring and they have a trainer. Andre Ward never went into the ring without Virgil Hunter. Why? Because he has another set of eyes on a fight where Andre Ward is clearly making all of the decisions in the boxing ring on a, in, on a real time basis. But when you sit down, you have someone say, hey, look out for this. He's trying that. They give you your water, right? They put the in swell on your eye if you're getting a little swelling. If you go in there blind by yourself with no trainer, are you in as good a position as you would have been if you had had expert advice in preparation for the fight and expert handling in, in the midst of the fight? Of course you would not. The same thing would applies with negotiations. If you are not a professional and professionally skilled at the art of negotiation, you may very well not, you may miss opportunities that they are there for you to take advantage of. You may actually, because of the way that you go about talking to people, you may actually isolate yourself and prevent them from wanting to do business with you. If you are an actually trained in negotiation, which I have to tell you, I am, I tell you that that is not bad advice to say, look, you, if you go to a negotiation table by yourself, that is going to be a hard time. Now, why, why would somebody say that Terrence Crawford went there by himself? Because Terrence Crawford is directly talking to Al Heyman himself, who is very expertise at the art of expert at the art of negotiation. And he very well may be trying to communicate to Terrence Crawford or Terrence Crawford and somebody else that is not experienced in that regard in ways of capitalizing and making money for both parties. When you have an issue on one hand and an issue on the other hand, where you're like, I'm not moving on this and you can try to find value somewhere else, right? Asking for things like approval over expenses. It's not going to do anything. It's actually asking for something you don't want, but I won't get into that. However, I just find the interest that this to be the situation for from my point of view. Um, 
People are believing that Terrence Crawford was a problem because of the things that Terrence Crawford has said himself in his interview on his uh, public relations deal that he did over there on Instagram, on the interviews that he's get done to, with Kate Abdu. Now, maybe people are looking at it, you know, from an angle where they don't trust him to begin with. But hey, man, it's not because people are just pulling things up out of whole, whole cloth. And it's also definitely with with, with uh, Sean Porter. He's telling you something that is absolutely positively true. Whether or not Terrence Crawford actually had someone there that was expertise in that regard or not, can't speak on it. However, for certain, the idea that you in a big, in any negotiation really that you have of any magnitude beyond doing something that is just a simple transaction, there's absolutely smart to be advised by someone else while you give them what the things that you want to achieve, what your walkaway points are, and then have them help you figure out how you can maximize things and actually may get things that you didn't know that you could get and prevent yourself, prevent you from doing things that you may not have wanted to do to begin with. Like, for example, approving all expenses, which is absolutely positively unnecessary. You can, all you have to do in that particular sense, situation is set the expenses for the event and agree upon a not to exceed limit. You can do a not to exceed 10%. And that means if it's 6%, all it is is 6%. And you can get that justified afterwards. But you don't need to slow down the purchasing, the decision-making process, and all of that by actually asking for sign-off on everything related to it. And that is an expert opinion. My expert opinion. Not just fantasy getting pulled out of the woodwork. But anyway, it is what it is. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces.